What's up, y'all? Y'all already know who it is. Got a crazy subject that I want to talk about today. This subject, something different. Not, I don't really know too many people that do this subject, but this one is about manual versus automatic. And let me get to the point on this situation here. Now, for me, I think to have a sports car, you have to have a manual because it's the main enjoyment that you're trying to have excitement even convertible at least too because you're trying to be enjoying every moment that you're in the car you spend a lot of money on your car you want to have the most fun and a manual is a actually pure car when you have a sports car so you know for me the gtr you know you got the new some of the new corvettes uh what other automatics they got they got the new automatic 911s the higher tier class 911s uh you know you, you got the new r rates is automatic the new lamborghinis they all automatic you know and see what people don't get is they're marketing this shit basically when they had an optional available for a manual it wasn't that many people getting them because the purists, they love it. And they're complaining not back then. They're complaining now, up until now. Because it's so much fun to have a car like that that you can enjoy so much, especially a fast car. You have an exotic car, a sports car, any of those type of cars, you know, it's the most maximum enjoyment that you can get out of a car. So what people don't understand, when people make these paddle shifts, the Tiptronic, the PDK, or, you know, all the, the the automatic stuff, it's basically because people are on tracks. People, When people race these cars on the tracks, they don't give two fucks about shifting the gear. You know, they, they want to hit the paddles. That, that, that millisecond is when it shifts that damn quick. You know, they're trying to go and hit these track times, these lap times. And, and you know, it makes it easier for the people that own these car businesses to sell these cars because anybody can drive it. When you have an automatic car, anybody can drive it. It's not like, you know, and it, which is stupid because they still should have kept it an optional thing if you want a manual. You know, if I go to the dealership and I'm a billionaire, I don't give a fuck what car don't come, you know, manual no more. If I want it manual, it needs to be manual. You know, you got some people that just don't care and just want a car and just want to drive and they fine with that. But for me, I'm a really car fanatic. I live cars. I eat, sleep cars. So it's like for me, I like the maximum enjoyment of a car, which would be a manual. The only way I would take an automatic is if I'm driving like a SUV or, you know, I'm driving a big lifted truck. But shit, some big lifted trucks have manuals like the F650 slash 750. You can get a six speed manual, a seven speed manual in it, you know, so certain things, you know, if I'm in a big big mercedes a s65 or a bmw 760 or you know an audi a8 or s8 or you know what i mean those type of cars then i can accept a tiptronic automatic you know thing with it because it's a big luxury car something that you're not really enjoying as much as a sports car or an exotic car with the top down you want the maximum thrills you got a six-speed manual hell you might even want to fix it up some more twin turbo it supercharger it you get best of both worlds actually you get all worlds when you to me if you got convertible manual and you're actually able to fix that particular car up that's that's the maximum of anything that you would want in that class you know so when you got all these automatics this is the big problem with automatics and people do not understand or some people just don't care because they got so much money to the point where they say hey i got automatics and manuals but if you're a person like me you get a chance with one car you want to have that best one car for whatever you're using it for me i'll be using it for the business so i need the best car for my business and presentation so the trick is about automatic cars. They shift in milliseconds, right? So let's say you get a twenty, a twenty fifteen. Let's say if I got uh, what's a car that people always say something? Okay, let's 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 do this one. The Lamborghini Gallardo. Okay, so they come with an E gear, which is automatic transmission with the paddle shifts. So let's say if you have a Gallardo. Let's 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 do the first year Gallardo cuz they you know they had them out for a long time. I say a 20 a 2005, okay? And then you do a 2012 or a 2015 LP570 E gear. It's going to shift way faster than that old Gallardo did the first one that came out. So the trick is 
They keep people buying new cars because of the milliseconds, how long it takes for it to shift that gear with the paddles in milliseconds. So each time they make a new car, it shifts faster and faster and faster and faster. And people, like I said, don't realize that they doing this on purpose because a lot of people are track racers or they want to go to the tracks and set the best lap times and this, this and that. But if you actually modified your car, if you wanted it, uh, the best track time that bad you can modify that car that's a manual six speed five speed seven speed manual you can modify that car to make it go whatever track speed you want to have it for that particular time that you're trying to access or you know um surpass so it's really to me no point to have a paddle shift fast exotic car unless if you're just a fan of paddle shifts. And I can respect that because I love Formula One cars. And Formula One cars, they're paddle shifts. That particular car, well, actually some of them came manual. But that particular car, I can take as a paddle shift car too. Just like we was talking about big trucks or we're talking about a big luxury car. I could do those paddle shifts all day and be fine. Stick and the paddle shifts behind the steering wheel, I can do that and be fine. But when you're talking about fast cars and I'm spending a lot of money, automatic cars their clutch is not lasting as long as manuals they're not as reliable they're not as fun you know the milliseconds your car gonna get old as hell on shift time i'm gonna be able to shift my manual faster than your damn paddle shift because you got the old paddle shift now and they got new new and then they about to bring some old new new you know so it's like it's bullshit with it because if i if i buy a porsche 911 gt3 rs and i spend three four hundred thousand for it and it shifts amazingly quick. Porsche is like one of the baddest cars that, you know, the baddest companies that that's out. I love Ferrari. I'm with y'all too. But Porsche, you can actually really drive the damn car. You can drive the car and not worry. So yeah, if I was to buy that Porsche and then hell, what, three years later, they come out with another GT3 RS and that is the same damn price. And I don't, maybe, well, they really hold value like that. But you're not going to get every single penny out of it that you paid for it, you know, and you kept it for three years, unless if it's just like a rare one of something. The RS models is rare as is, you know, but yeah, I don't think you're going to personally get all the money back. But yeah, you spend all that damn money, and then three years later, they got a car that shifts faster than yours and probably look better than yours. So that's how they drive customers in to not even care about manual, automatic, this and that, especially the stupid rich people. They just like, hey, I want the car. I want it now. I want it this color. They just snap fingers and the shit just happened, you know? They don't have time for stuff like that. The ones, the purest, the really purest, they the ones that's on these forums that's complaining about people not making manuals and this, this, and that anymore because it's way more fun, way more engaging. It's just an experience that people have to have. Even if you have a slow car, a manual is fun. A slow car with a manual is fun. It's actually faster than the automatic. So if you have a sports car... It's no need for me to have a coupe because I'm cooped up now. Like, yeah, I got the sunroof up. It's out. But I'm still cooped up in a damn car. You think I'm going to spend all that money and not want a convertible to enjoy best of both worlds? If I don't want to be seen, hell, I press the button and I'm, it's, the roof's up. You know? So a manual in that car is just so mandatory. So mandatory. The only way that I'm going to be purchasing a sports car that's tiptronic, automatic with paddles is if one of these companies damn near hand it to me because as I build my channel up, you're going to see me in manuals. Don't get me wrong. I love each and every car and automobile in this world, but to each is their own and I get the maximum enjoyment out of having a car that is like that. That's a manual. It's so much fun. You enjoy it so much. You're going to smile and grin every time you're in it. You're not even going to want to stop driving it, you know? So it's just something that I had to bring up. This is a big subject that's in the car industry right now. That's the automatics is taking over, you know? Like all these models that's coming out now, they're all starting to come out automatic. Like the new Huracan, automatic. The new Aventador, automatic. Even the hypercars, the uh, Reventon, automatic. The Venino Roaster or Coupe, automatic. Bugatti is automatic. 
you know, Pagani, they make it manuals. It's a smaller company, so they're going to want to make sure any and every person is satisfied. So I put my hat down for that. Porsche, y'all are kick ass, but y'all about to get kicked in the ass by a lot of people because people want manuals. And y'all only bringing the, the entry level 911s or the Cayman, you know, the Cayman models or the Boxster models. Now that's all that's automatic and manual optionals. The rest of the higher tier cars and Porsche is all automatic. But Porsche and Aston Martin, Porsche and Aston Martin claim. And I'm pretty sure Lotus is on the same boat too because Lotus is not one of those big high up, high up brands that people just, when they hear it, they just like where it's at, you know. But I like that way because your car is just super rare. Not many people have it. And that's what I like to have cars that people don't have like that. So those three companies, Lotus, Porsche, and Aston Martin, claims that they're going to satisfy their customers to how it needs to be. So I can continue to make money and sell these cars to you. I'm going to give you whatever you want, which is excellent. Excellent. And I'm I'm going to see what's going to happen down the road. We're going to see what's going to go and what other cars come out. Like the new GT3 RS supposed to be a manual. So we're going to see what unfolds and, you know, we're going to see what happens. You know, I've been looking at a lot of the new Aston Martins. They're manuals. You can get the optional manual, you know, uh, a lot of the Lotuses, you can get manuals. But, you know, all these other companies like Ferrari, one of the companies I love so much. It's like, hell, if y'all, if all y'all companies would make 